Good evening, everybody. It, it really is quite late evening. In fact, it's five minutes to ten on Thursday night. But I just thought I'd like to keep the tradition going of trying to record a, a message. Obviously, this won't go up now until tomorrow. But I've just returned from the Royal Philharmonic, the Liverpool Philharmonic, where we had the most wonderful experience of the uh, Missa di Gloria of Puccini. Um, I must say it was a last minute decision to go. I've had a, an intriguing week, as many of you know, with a couple of funerals. We had Jackie Backstad uh, on Tuesday, and of course the very sad funeral today of young Jude. Um, so I've, ha I've been asking you to pray for Teresa and the two lovely children, Valeria uh, and Zelina, both of whom read at the funeral this afternoon. And although it was a terribly sad occasion, uh, somehow it was filled with hope and faith, surrounded by quite a number of people from the Nigerian community who joined us and uh, supported and surrounded the family with their love and their prayers. So, and indeed, quite a number of our parishioners turned up uh, to, to be there to support them too. So thank you very much for that, and I'm sure those of you who, who couldn't be there will continue to pray for the family and um, that they will find peace at this very difficult time. I must say, for, for the two young children like that, seven years and ten years, to actually read at their father's funeral, uh, I thought was quite astonishing, and they read most beautifully. So thank you to, to all those who made that possible, who supported uh, the arrangements and uh, made, made the day um, as blessed as it possibly could be. And in a way, do you know the, the, the mass? I've never heard Puccini's mass before, I have to say. Um, we had the, the choir. I think there were 105 I counted in, in this great philharmonic choir that we've got here. It just was extraordinary. And... Somehow we, we talk about the angels singing in heaven and this great hymn of praise to God that will be there when you reach the sanctus. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. And we, we sing this um, at our masses sometimes, but when it's put to uh, astonishing music like this, you suddenly feel as if you're drawn into heaven. And it did make me think of, of what it's all about in terms of our faith what we were praying for for Jude today, what we were praying for Jackie on Tuesday, and for all these funerals we've had throughout these last few years. But uh, one day we'll be part of this great uh, choir in, in heaven. But the, the gifts that God has given us, it just kind of, uh, well, it lifts me out of myself, and I just felt I wanted to share this with you tonight. I've come straight back from, from the Philharmonic and, and uh, put the recording on. Last Sunday was very special too. Uh, again, I want to thank John Elcock. I thought he spoke uh, really from the heart about himself, about how the pandemic had forced him, forced him, inspired him, I suppose, in the end when we began to emerge. And he, he, he talked about coming out of the benches and uh, discovering ways of uh, helping the community, of meeting new people. Um, and simply offered us something to think about. We're not going to rush into anything, but in the new year, I hope you'll be reflecting on what he said uh, on the whole question of shrine ministry, on the great tradition we've got here of the icon of Our Lady of Perpetual Succor. He touched on many aspects, of course, that we have the first copy ever to come from Rome, uh, and here it is in our oratory, but of course, Soon after that, there was a, a copy made, and that's in Our Lady Chapel. Uh, and, of course, we have the other icon now there helping us with our prayers, both in the wake of the pandemic and now for a cease, a fire, for the end of the war in Ukraine. Please, God. Um, so I don't really need to expand on that at all, I think. I just hope that uh, if you didn't get a chance to hear John last weekend, could I ask you just to tune in to one of the recorded Masses, either from St. Mary's or from Bishop Eaton. He said pretty well the same thing each time. He spoke, uh, I think he had a few notes, but he, he basically spoke from the heart, uh, and the message was the same. So if you haven't uh, heard him, then please do tune in and listen to what he was saying. This Sunday we go into Advent and uh, we begin the countdown to Christmas um, and of course all the practical things uh, emerge for all of us. We're the same here in the monastery, we want to get everything ready 
for the great feast. But let's make sure that we use these four weeks. We've got four full weeks this time. East, uh, Christmas is actually on, on a Sunday this year. Um, let's lose, use it too for uh, our spiritual pre preparation for Christmas. There are lots of things on, and make sure you get one of those leaflets uh, for Advent and Christmas, which will um, take you right through, I think, until the Epiphany. So thanks again to David Delaney for making sure that they have been prepared um, for both parishes. I think that's all the news for now. Uh, I'll go and uh, hopefully get a good night's rest and, and be ready. Uh, I won't say for the fray tomorrow, but uh, for all that tomorrow might bring. So thank you again for tuning in. May God continue to bless you, your homes, your families. And may he continue to unite us and help us to draw out the gifts uh, in our communities so that we can continue to build up the family of God here on earth. May the blessing and peace of Almighty God touch your own homes and families and strengthen you again with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I ask the Lord's blessing on you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's beg the prayers of Our Lady to our Mother of Perpetual Succor and of all our patron saints. Amen. <laughs>